Welcome back to Event. Well, since 1997, the Old Fitz Theatre in Sydney has provided a space for independent productions and rising talent to strut their stuff and give audiences a chance to see creative works that you'd normally have to go off, off, off Broadway to find. Well, this month certainly doesn't disappoint with the production of Pulitzer Prize and Tony Award-winning one-man show, I Am My Own Wife, playing November 17 through to December 5. And actor Ben Gerard owns the stage as German transvestite Charlotte von Malsdorf and joins me now on event. Welcome. Welcome. Thank it's you. Good too. I mean, I, you're... This good pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, interestingly enough, I read this book many, many years ago. Oh, wow. And it's one of those books that just stays with you because the story is so incredibly powerful. I am like a maid servant in this house. You must clean and clean because the dust is growing and the dust is looking like the dust of 1890. And you must put it away. Tell me what it is that drew you to this role, first of all. Uh, I saw the piece uh, that Jefferson Mays starred in the Tony Award winning production over 10 years ago and I absolutely loved it. Never in a million years would have imagined that I would one day be <laughs> attempting to do it, but uh, a director brought the play to me and told me that he wanted me to do it, yeah. had uh, seen me perform 12 characters in another production and so our company, Redline, at Old Fit said yes, and I was like, okay, I guess it's happening now. But, I mean, you're incredibly versatile because, you know, you do a lot of sort of gender benders. You, mm -hmm. you know, we see you on Open Slather. Hi. Johan here. Booming out to all you beauty wannabes live from the famous Fashion Institute of Hohenschanz and Fair. <laughs> Where did that skill come from? That is incredibly challenging. Uh, it comes from a, a few different things. I think some people are drawn to acting because they love escaping into another character. So for me... Um, you love lots of characters. I do. I, I just, I'm fascinated by what drives different types of people and people who are incredibly different to me. So whether that is a, a transvestite or, um, you know, that blokey policeman or... I, I just love trying to understand what makes them tick. <laughs> we can't typecast you because then you go to Wolf Creek too. And I remember seeing that movie, which was one of the most terrifying movies I've ever seen. And you're the Bogan cop. And I'm like, that's Ben. Yeah. So, you know, well, what, what was that experience like? Well, all I can say is that you can take the boy out of Frankston, but you can't take Frankston out of boy. It was uh, a, an amazing opportunity to get to um, show myself oh, as well as other people, oh, wow, I can... I can, I can do that. So tell me, when you took this role on, I, I mean, I can imagine the, the massive work that that is. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got how much time on stage for you as uh, a one-man play? The, the, it, it is done in two acts, so ultimately the whole piece runs for about an hour and a half. So how do you prepare for something like that? It takes a long time. I, I knew I was doing the play a year ago. I started learning my lines a year ago. A year ago? Yeah. Uh, so I would learn maybe 10 pages every month and just let that settle. I worked with um, actually Shannon Ashlin, who is an actress from Wolf Creek who is fluent in German. She coached me in my pronunciation uh, and also translating the German with me. And uh, yeah, just as the months go by, that's how you get it's through it. It's extraordinary, isn't it? I'd film full time during the day, playing three different characters a day at Open Slather, and then I would go home and uh, I, I and my own wife would be there waiting for me to yeah, you must wake up some days and go, who am I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am at the moment, so it's OK. <laughs> now, you know, it's an amazing coincidence. We had Grey Gardens on the show today, and, of course, Doug Wright is the playwright of both, and he plays a major role in this, doesn't he? He absolutely was horrified with himself when he realised that it was actually the best way to construct the play. He thought it was the most narcissistic thing he could possibly do, but it just unlocked his storytelling, because the piece is essentially him investigating his hero and unlocking um, the fact that there is no such thing as goodies and baddies, no one's black and white, and especially Charlotte. So you're going to perform um, a piece out of the play for yes. us. So just set it up for us. Where Where is it in the show? And, and are we seeing the two characters? Definitely. Uh, it's early in the piece when uh, Doug has met her. Uh, he's heard about her. Uh, thinks she sounds incredible and then uh, has come to Berlin to start interviewing her. She is um, more delightful than he could have ever hoped. And uh, so the piece I'm about to perform is him uh, describing 
his first impressions of her and then her beginning to tell her story, her experiences in Nazi Germany as a young transvestite. Fascinating. Can't wait. OK, let's take a look. Charlotte's just slipped into the kitchen to bring us some cafe and kuchen. I brought a camera, but I'm too shy to ask her to pose. I'm afraid she'll think I've only come to gawk. So I wanted to record a quick visual and impression. She's about 5'8", maybe 170 pounds, 65 years old, doesn't look like a drag queen at all. No makeup. I asked her about that. She said she doesn't need it. She still wears her own hair, which is white, Goose feather white, got, uh, cut in, I guess you'd call it a page boy. She's got on a black peasant dress, a string of pearls, and heavy black shoes, orthopedic shoes. She um, doesn't have breasts. Well, not really, but just enough paunch to sort of enhance the impression. But her hands are big and thick. The hands of a woodworker, a craftsman, definitely a man's hands. On the last days of the World War, the, the most dangerous time for me because I refused to carry a weapon or to wear a uniform. Instead, I had my hair long and blonde and my mother's coat and the shoes of a girl. And so I was in Germany, we say Freifield, like the Jews. We were wild game. Berlin was destroyed. I was walking about, the homes were all broken and the street was full of rubble. And I would turn a street and there was coming Russian airplanes with the splatter bombs so close that you could see the pilots with the helmets and the goggles. And this was very dangerous because wherever you were standing, the splatter bombs exploded into the earth. Pieces went everywhere. There was no escape. And there was, standing on the corner, an old air raid shelter. And so I went inside and I was sitting there for maybe half an hour and I could hear the bombs and the old building was shaking. And suddenly, the door opened, and in came four SS officers, infantry police, die Ketten Hunter. And they were looking for boys and men and old men which were hiding without weapons. And so they dragged me up to the police station, and I had to stand outside against the wall. The SS men were standing four, maybe five meters away. All deserters shall be shot! And they wanted to shoot me. I looked down. I didn't want to see them shoot. I thought, I'll wait until I feel it. But when I looked at the, at the ground, I, I saw the boots of a commander. And he looked at me. Are you a boy or a girl? And I thought, if they shoot me, what's the difference between a boy and a girl? Because dead is dead. I am a boy. How old are you, Zed? Sixteen. And he turned to face the execution squad commander. We are not so far gone that we have to shoot school children. And this was my salvation. <laughs>